about the government? Can you tell me about the Constitution? Sure. But wait, Israel doesn't have one. Why? Did you know that Israel is one of only five countries that does not have a formal written constitution? The others are New Zealand, Saudi Arabia, the United Kingdom, and Canada. So why doesn't Israel have a constitution? And how did its lack of a constitution set the stage for the crisis happening in Israel today? I'm Noam, and this is Today Unpacked, where we rise above the noise to give you clarity and perspective on current events in the Jewish world. You've probably heard about the massive protests in Israel against the government's plan to overhaul the judicial system. If you haven't, check out our video unpacking everything you need to know and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a future episode. Why did 300,000 Israelis, and some say half a million Israelis, protest in the streets this past Saturday night in the 10th consecutive week of demonstrations? All of these people aren't protesting over any specific policy. They are demonstrating about the very rules of the game, specifically whether the Supreme Court should have the ability to strike down laws or if the Knesset should be able to pass any law it pleases. Michael Kaplow wrote, It seems strange that the fundamental rules of the game are still open for debate 75 years after Israel's founding. The heart of Israel's problem? Israel doesn't have a constitution defining and designing the rules. Now, Israel was supposed to have a constitution, and in fact, the Declaration of Independence explicitly called for creating one. There are three reasons why it didn't happen, but first, what is a constitution in the first place? It could be defined as a higher law that cannot be unilaterally changed by an ordinary legislative act. The content of a particular constitution varies between countries, but most of them contain, number one, the basic principles of the state, number two, the structures and processes of government, and the fundamental rights of citizens. Michael Goodman explained. So laws limit civilians, constitution limits governments. So for civilians, there is behavior that's not illegal. And for the parliament, there is laws which are unconstitutional, like illegal laws. There are different ways a constitution can limit the power of the government. For example, it can separate the legislative, executive, and judicial functions and set up checks and balances so that no one branch of government has all the power. It can also include a bill of rights that the government is prohibited from denying to the people. So back to the point, why doesn't Israel have a constitution? According to historian Anita Shapira, David Ben-Gurion recognized the importance of a constitution as a central symbol of a state. But he didn't think it was necessary to have one. For one thing, Ben-Gurion believed in unrestrained majority rule. In January 1950, as the first Knesset debated whether to create a constitution, Ben-Gurion gave an impassioned speech against it, saying, Only the nation determines the constitution. That is, a constitution is what the people want and decide after an open inquiry and vote. Rather than create a constitution, Ben-Gurion believed that the majority of the day should determine the rules. A lifelong socialist, Ben-Gurion was certain that the future was progressive, Chaviv Retagor explained. Hard to amend constitutions and powerful courts, he believed served elites and reactionaries and preserved inequalities. Another reason the founders didn't create a constitution was that most of the Jews weren't in Israel yet. Ben-Gurion argued that only 10% of the Jewish people were actually in Israel at the time, and it was unwise for a tiny minority to force a constitution on the entire people for generations to come, Shapiro wrote. I think Ben-Gurion thought, let's let them come, let them make Aliyah, and then we'll see. If all of them come from America, we will make a constitution like the Americans. But if all of them come from Russia, perhaps we will have a different constitution. The discussion was put on hold. Ben-Gurion also wanted to avoid greater division between the religious and secular parties that a constitution could create. The Haredim, the religious orthodox in the Knesset said, we have our constitution already. You will not write a constitution that was written by, by a man when we have a constitution that was given up by God. According to Shapira, a constitution would raise the issue of making the halakha the source of law in Israel, or at least a demand to base the constitution on Jewish law, which the judicial system totally rejected. Remember, it was 1949, and Israel was just emerging from its war of independence. Given these external threats, it was particularly important to Ben-Gurion to preserve internal unity. To be fair to Ben-Gurion and the rest of Israel's founders, there is a debate among scholars about whether it was possible or not for them to create a constitution. 
Some historians argue that the divisions between the religious and secular parties were so intense that there is no chance it could have happened. Shapir, however, writing in 2012, argued that it might have been possible, adding, from the perspective of 60 years on, this seems one of Ben-Gurion's greatest mistakes. A constitution could have made a significant contribution to healing the rifts in Israeli society. Now here's what you need to know about how Israel's lack of a constitution set the stage for the crisis today. Let's rise above all the noise with these three takeaways on how we got here. Number one, after it became clear that the first Knesset could not agree on a constitution, they reached a compromise on the issue to create basic laws instead. In what was known as the Harari Resolution, the Knesset agreed to build the constitution chapter by chapter in such a way that each will constitute a separate basic law. The chapter shall be presented to the Knesset when the committee completes its work and all the chapters together shall comprise the constitution of the state. Over the decades, the Knesset has passed 13 basic laws pertaining to the structure of the government and human rights. However, it has not yet passed a basic law that defines the rules of how laws are made or how the Supreme Court reviews legislation. Number two, the tension between the Supreme Court and the Knesset heated up in the early 1990s. In 1995, Aaron Barak, who was then the president of the Supreme Court, interpreted Israel's basic law on human rights to have constitutional authority so that any law that contradicted it was illegal. And then the Supreme Court starts being more active and starts canceling laws of the Knesset, saying that they contradict the basic law of the Knesset of 1992. So the government now feels very limited in its ability to promote legislation in the parliament. On the Israeli right, the Supreme Court exercising its newfound veto power built a narrative that power had shifted away from the Israeli people who elected the Knesset members to the Supreme Court and that the Supreme Court had robbed the Knesset and Israeli public of its power. And number three, after 75 years, will Israel finally complete the work of its constitution? According to Michael Goodman, the current crisis could have a positive conclusion if Prime Minister Netanyahu transforms this moment from a constitutional breakdown to a constitutional moment. We don't have to have a complete constitution. A basic law defining the rules of the game is enough. It would be a tremendous achievement. What's important is that this will happen if Prime Minister Netanyahu will capture this opportunity. I hope that this crisis is leading Israel to a constitutional moment. So let me ask you. What should Israel's constitution look like?